Well, looks like we have another mystery coming from the James Webb Space Telescope. Yet another unusual galaxy with no explanation, new mysteries, and a galaxy that suggests that our current understanding and current models might once again be incomplete. And so, hello info person, this is Anton. Let's discuss this unusual galaxy you see right here that we've actually known about since 2010, but that was only recently confirmed to be somewhat strange. But before we talk about why this is strange, I think it's important to understand where this galaxy is located and why it makes no sense. So if we look at the image of the evolution of the universe, there's this period that we refer to as the Dark Ages during the first billion years of the existence. We've actually discussed this period recently because James Webb potentially solved the mystery of the Dark Ages, explaining what made it not dark. You can learn more about this in the video in the description. But during this Dark Ages period, we essentially had a lot of neutral hydrogen. Gas that was very opaque to a lot of high energy emissions such as UV light. And so a lot of galaxies located in this region would very often have a very unusual light spectrum. They would sort of look like this. They would have what's known as a Lyman break. Basically, a sudden disappearance of anything in higher frequencies because UV light and everything beyond it completely disappeared. In more visual terms, it kind of looks like this. The galaxy is visible in the infrared, visible, and even near ultraviolet, but everything beyond that, it suddenly disappears. And we call these galaxies Lyman break galaxies because this basically happens at a very specific frequency, the Lyman break. The frequency where neutral hydrogen absorbs high energy photons. And so when we find a galaxy that has this unusual spectrum, we know it was very, very far away and was very likely extremely young. And so back in 2010, another survey discovered one of these galaxies, whose name you see right here. Another Lyman Bray galaxy, whose actual emissions for some reason were a little bit weak and a little bit unusual. Unusual in the sense that it was basically what's known as a quenched galaxy, or in other words, a dead galaxy. A galaxy that was no longer producing any new stars, and a galaxy that entered a period we usually expect from a galaxy that's billions of years old. Now, we'll actually talk about quenching in a few seconds, but first, what exactly made this galaxy so strange? Well, first, the additional observations from the James Webb, specifically more recently, determined that this galaxy must have formed 700 million years after the Big Bang. In other words, it was not the first galaxy, but was definitely formed during the Dark Ages. And it had its most active period approximately 80 million years ago. But this active period only lasted for approximately 30 million years. And it seems to have completely ended 20 million years ago. In other words, this galaxy was only forming stars for maybe 40 to 50 million years, with something suddenly stopping star formation and making this galaxy quenched. A galaxy whose mass is actually not even that high, but whose mass should be enough to make it keep going and forming new stars for at least a few billion years. And so that by itself was a pretty big problem. It implied a problem with current models of star formation and galactic formation, but possibly some other problems as well. But first, let's actually talk about quenching. Quenching related to astronomy. It's essentially a process where a galaxy loses all of its cold gas that dramatically suppresses star formation or even stops it completely, turning a typical active galaxy into something more or less orange or red with practically no star formation inside. And based on a lot of observations, we've always believed that this is a relatively long process involving several periods of star formation and different types of galactic evolution. As you can see, our own galaxy, the Milky Way, is somewhere in the middle. And so this technically should take billions of years. But that's of course assuming normal conditions and assuming that nothing extreme happens to this galaxy. In some cases, extreme things do happen, such as the black hole, the central black hole, becoming extremely active and turning way, way too powerful for its own good. Now, in most cases, a central black hole, when it becomes active, it will actually dramatically increase the activity in the central region, even encouraging star formation at some point. But in some cases, if the black hole becomes too active, it can start emitting such strong galactic winds, here we're talking about thousands of kilometers per second, that it completely strips the galaxy of its star-forming gas, making it become quenched within a relatively short time. But even here, normally this activity lasts for hundreds of millions of years, or even billions of years, because we've discovered a lot of different distant quasars that can easily do this for a long time. And so quenching a galaxy so quickly within just 50 million years is very strange. 
but I'll turn away the star formation itself through the process of very powerful supernova and a lot of fast-paced emissions can actually create its own galactic wind as well. And so another way for a galaxy to be quenched is through a sudden, very explosive star formation period that basically removes all of the gas all at once in a relatively short time. But this normally is not permanent and the star formation eventually returns as a lot of the gas escaping the galaxy comes back at some point. And it's also something we expect to last much, much longer. This might have happened in the center of the Milky Way sometime in the past, but it's also something that's definitely going to happen again as a lot of the gas gets reshuffled and creates new active regions. But another way for a galaxy to get quenched is through the interaction with something else. It's not uncommon for galaxies to become quenched as they get tidally disrupted or as they move close to a massive galaxy that strips them of all of their gas. This is usually through the process known as REM pressure. And so tidal disruption and REM pressure can also technically kill the galaxy. But once again, this is something that lasts much, much longer and is also something that does not make sense here either. We don't see any partners, or at least partners that would be massive enough to suddenly strip the gas. And so instead we see a galaxy that's essentially right at the end of the galactic evolution, a so-called red sequence galaxy. Okay, a super quick lesson. When it comes to the galactic age and galactic types, astronomers usually divide them into blue cloud, green valley, and red sequence. These are the three main types we usually see in all of the galactic surveys. And we think that all galaxies start as these star-forming blue galaxies. In essence, galaxies filled with a lot of really young, really bright stars that produce a lot of bright ultraviolet light and extremely powerful emissions. But then at some point, as they mellow down, or as something else slows down the star formation, they eventually transition into the so-called green valley. Not green because they're green optically, but green because of the way that their color appears in the ultraviolet spectrum. And interestingly, this is where Milky Way and the Andromeda are technically today. They're not really dead yet, in other words, they're not quenched, but their star formation has dramatically slowed down, with both galaxies only forming like one to maybe two solar masses per year. And so they're definitely very mild compared to a lot of other galaxies. And if left alone, eventually they'll turn into red sequence. Galaxies like M87, the one with the picture of a black hole. A red sequence galaxy with barely any star formation and a lot of ancient stars. And these galaxies do actually appear a little bit more red in color, mostly because the stars here are normally red and orange. There are practically no blue stars on the inside because there is no star formation. But Milky Way and the Andromeda are expected to collide in the next 4 billion years, and so their colors are probably going to transform and the galaxies are probably going to become blue once again. This is going to take a while, but it will most likely happen in the next 5 billion years. Yet intriguingly, this newly discovered galaxy seems to be already red sequence. In other words, its emissions are extremely similar to what we observe from a quenched galaxy usually billions of years old. Although here the observations from the star formation do suggest that this is a new galaxy. So it was born as a blue galaxy, potentially skipped its green stage and became a red sequence almost right away. During the period when most other galaxies were extremely active and were producing a tremendous amount of stars everywhere. So yeah, something here is definitely strange. And even in terms of gas composition and overall appearance, it's surprisingly similar to our neighbor, the Small Magellanic Cloud. And the reason this is actually really intriguing is because we know that SMC, the Small Magellanic Cloud, is technically a primordial galaxy. It contains a lot of ancient undisturbed gas and was probably completely untouched by anything for billions of years until for some reason it came way too close to the Milky Way and the Large Magellanic Cloud and now suddenly exploded in star formation. And so here we do observe a lot of gas that's billions of years old that's suddenly forming a lot of new stars. And so in some sense there's a really big chance that maybe SMC started in an extremely similar way. It got quenched really quickly, stayed inactive for a very long time, and now reactivated because of the interaction with some of the nearby galaxies. And that's maybe one of the hints we're getting out of this. It could be some kind of a common phenomenon where galaxies basically just pause star formation for some reason, restarting it once again once the proper conditions are met. Or on the other hand, maybe this is actually an extremely common phenomenon because in the past researchers observed other galaxies temporarily stopping star formation as well just to restart it later on. And so this temporarily quenching could be actually everywhere 
it just we've never seen it before in such an early galaxy. Most of the previous discoveries were in much more massive and much much older galaxies. And so for all we know this galaxy is also going to come back to life either by itself once the gas returns into the center or maybe once it experiences an interaction with some kind of a neighbor. But because of the unusual parallels with the small Magellanic Cloud it would be interesting to investigate what happened to the SMC back in the days and what exactly made this galaxy quenched or quiescent back in the days. And so at least for now definitely a somewhat intriguing discovery and a discovery of a new record holder. The farthest quenched galaxy ever seen. A galaxy at a redshift of 7.3 or roughly around 29 billion light years away from us. But a galaxy we're probably going to be discussing again once there are some additional clarifications or someone discovers what's going on here. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on other unusual galaxies from the James Webb with videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by doing channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.